ever tell you how the beast first came to live in Doily Wood. The poor fellow didn't look like that then. I remember that day so well. Good morning, Arthur, trilled Mavis Cruet, the fairy. ringing far, far away. There they go again. Ah, you, Mavis Cruet, have got a bad attack of the old dreaded uh, ringing in the ears. But I heard it so distinctly. It went dum dum de dum 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 de dum And then, asked Arthur, did it go... Dum dum de dum dum de dum dum de dum. Yes, why you did hear it. Uh huh. I didn't hear nothing. And what you heard was all inside your pretty little head, me lovely. Wedding bells they was, brought about by a desire in the part of the brain we caterpillars term as the subconscious, a desire to participate in matrimony. In other words, to get wed. Gosh said Mavis. There is only one known cure for this complaint, a wedding. And for that we shall need a bridegroom. I don't know any, faltered Mavis. No problem. We wait for the very next bloke to come along. You give a wave of the old wand and abracadabra, one bridegroom. What I'd really like, sighed Mavis, is a handsome prince to ride in and whisk me away. Now, it just so happened, by a fantastic coincidence, that riding into the woods at that very moment came Prince Humbert the Handsome. <laughs> Bicycling is so very good for one, too. But unfortunately, he was to run into... Evil Edna. A witch of extreme wickedness. Now who, cried the prince, has left a rotten old television receiver lying around? That's really dangerous. And what a rotten program. I'll rotten program him. And with that, she cast the wickedest spell of her evil career. She changed that poor prince into the beast. Meanwhile, Mavis and Arthur were still looking for a bridegroom. Stand by with the old wand, Maeve. I think someone's coming. Oh, Arthur, perhaps he'll be a handsome prince. Now! Grey topper. Because you are going to be a bridegroom, me lucky lad. No, no, no. I could never, never marry him. I know he's no oil painting, Maeve, said Arthur. But it's an honest face. I quite like his looks, Arthur, but I could never, never marry a beast who cannot pronounce his R's. Fairies really are ridiculous creatures. <laughs> creatures often visit doily woods and none was stranger than the creature arthur met one day oh, wow good morning friend you almost made me jump out of my skin gasped arthur ah said the creature it is quite usual for the caterpillar or larva of the species lepidoptera its moths and butterflies to shed their skins fancy that no one has ever told me. Not everyone knows, but I do. It's all in here. All in your tum? queried Arthur. Now, I'm only a mere caterpillar, mate, but I do know that your think box is upstairs. Ah, yes, in mere caterpillars, that is so, but I am a bookworm. 
Now, bookworms eat up facts from books. Consequently, our source of knowledge is our stomachs. Allow me to demonstrate. Um, delicious. Ah, now let me see. Ah, yes. Did you know that the sixth wife of King Henry VIII was called Catherine Parr? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, of course, said Arthur, keeping his fingers crossed. Everyone knows that. And his seventh wife was called Betty. You are an ignoramus. Oh, thank you, said Arthur. I say, said the bookworm, why not join me for breakfast? Chapter three looks quite tasty. Well, tart anyway, but I always eat leaves. Plenty of leaves here. <laughs> tart very much for breakfast, said Arthur. But as he walked back through the wood, he was feeling quite different. He felt all clever and knowledgeable. He discovered Mavis Cruet looking down a hole. Mavis, did you know that should that hole be deep enough to go right through the earth, it would finish up in Australia? Gosh, said Mavis. Then up popped a bunny. Excuse me, bunny, cried Mavis. But are you from Australia? Sure, Spot, said the rabbit. From a little place called Watership Down Under. Not necessarily true, said Arthur. Rabbits are well known for their mendacity. They're what? queried Mavis. It means they're all fibbers, said Arthur. Tell me, Arthur, said Mavis, why have you suddenly become so clever and use such long words? I owe it all to my new friend, the bookworm, and his book. It's made me what I am. It's made you ever so boring, said Mavis but under her breath. I must meet him. Hello, said the bookworm. Who are you? I'm Mavis Cruet. I'm a fairy. A fairy? There's no such thing. It says so here. You, madam, are an hallucination. Oh, you poor short-sighted little grub, you, cried Mavis. It's probably all the fault of your diet. You should eat lots and lots of lovely green stuff. I am a fairy, and just to prove it, I'm going to change that musty old book into a lovely tasty cabbage. <coughs> Not bad. Not bad at all. Now tell me, bookworm, asked Mavis. What is twice two? Um, 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 uh, uh, five, asked the bookworm. You're cured, said Mavis. soul, the Moog. That day, he was going nowhere in particular, which is where he went quite often, when it happened. And then again. It was obvious, even to the Moog, that he must do something about it, so he did. Oh, that was much better. No, it wasn't. Then who should come up but Mavis Cruet, the fairy, followed by the caterpillar called Arthur. Here, what's bitten the old Moog? He's just having a little scratch, Arthur, said Mavis. I expect he's got a little tickle. You've got a little tickle, haven't you, Moogie dear? Perhaps he's got a... A flea? <gasps> Shh! Arthur! What's wrong with having an old flea? Well, nice people never have a you-know-what, so we don't talk of such things. Oh, I see. So the old Moog here has got a you-know-what. Hey, Moog, have you got a you-know-what? No, Arthur, I've got a flea. Oh, the disgrace. Then who should come along but Car Wash the cat? Tell me, said Car Wash, do I see the Moog uh, driving or is he a uh, bee bopping? My eyes are not first class, you know. Perhaps this animal intends to star in some discotheque. 
the Mook is not dancing, Car Wash. He has a... Oh, how very irritating for the poor fellow. Perhaps the you-know-what will get giddy and fall off. If I do, I'll hop on to one of you lot. Hey, I never knew the old Moog was so clever. He said that without moving his lips. Moog, say bottle of beer. Bottle of beer. His lips did move, Arthur. I think I'll hop onto the caterpillar first. He looks nice and tasty. That was not the voice of the Moog. That was the voice of the parasite on the Moog's back. Oh, well, I think it's a flea. And I wish he'd hop it and have me for afters. No, you keep it, Moog, mate. Try to think of it as your own little pet. Well, the poor Moog would have had his little pet forever if it hadn't been for Mavis Cruitt. I am going to magic the you-know-what and make him vanish. Now, vanishing is what people do before Mavis waves her wand. Her magic nearly always goes wrong. Now, Mr. You-Know-What, vanish! Oh, crumbs! I've made him grow bigger! Mr. You-Know-What, come back! For the next few days, that giant flea terrorized everyone. Well, one bite from him, mate, and you'd lose an arm. Run! Ha ha! Well, once again, that little Mavis Cruitt saved the day. Fear not, Arthur. I shall wave my little magic wand and turn that horrid you-know-what into something. That would be nice. Now, what shall I turn him into? I know. <laughs> I turned him into a vegetarian, said Mavis. It all started one night when I was being particularly bright. I was just starting my dance through the forest when... Get off! Of it! Shoo! They're just moths, Willow, said Mavis Cruitt. Moths who find your light terribly attractive. They're just moths, Willow. Just moths? Just moths? Snapped the caterpillar, Arthur. I'll have you know that moths is one of nature's great triumphs, the ultimate in modern design, the concord of the insect world. Besides, some of my best friends is moths, not to mention relatives. <whistles> Cooey, Uncle Harold, it's me, Arthur. <whistles> Cooey, Auntie Hilda, be with you all soon. Well, he goes on in that tiresome manner until eventually I switch off my light and the moths fly off. But the next day... Good morning, Arthur, called the Moog. Arthur said, What did he say? He said he couldn't speak as his mouth was full of nails, said Carwash. Gracious me, gasped Mavis. Whatever are you building, Arthur? It's me chrysalis, said Arthur. I'm making me chrysalis. Very shortly, I shall creep into this penthouse, have a bit of a zizz, and wake up a moth. Then, a couple of flaps on the old wings, and up and away into the bright blue yonder. Gosh, said the Moog, that is very clever. I find it rather sad. Well, soon after that, Arthur crept into his chrysalis and went to sleep. Arthur, called Mavis, are you a moth yet? No, not yet. They did this every day. Cooey, Arthur, are you a moth yet? No, not yet. And after a week or so, they thought perhaps he sounded a little cross. No, I'm not. Then one day, who should rush up but a snail? 
Uh, a parcel for a caterpillar called Arthur, he panted. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, gasped the snail, and was gone in a flash. Well, the very next day... Cooey, Arthur, are you a moth yet? <gasps> Gosh! How do I look, folks? Now stand by for takeoff. <laughs> oh, that's odd. Let's try again. Most odd. Slight technical hitch, folks. Then in came the witch, Evil Edna. Hi, she said. What's that stupid caterpillar doing up there wearing a funny hat? Arthur has changed into a lovely moth. Good, Mavis. And she's just about to fly for the very first time. Rubbish, snapped Edna. It's just a caterpillar wearing a funny hat. And if it wants to fly, now's its chance. Then she cast one of her evil spells. <laughs> He's wrecked that moth suit, cried the snail. And it's not even his. Not his, cried Mavis. Definitely not. He hired those clothes from us. Mothbros. Oh, poor Arthur. He's turned into a hired clothes moth, said Mavis. One lovely afternoon in Doily Woods, Arthur the Caterpillar was nicely curled up having his little nap when he was aroused by tripping fairy footsteps. It was Mavis Cruet in a hurry. Hello, Arthur, trilled the fairy. <coughs> said Arthur. Can't stop for a chat. Am late for an appointment. Must fly. Bye. You fly. Now there's a laugh. You, Mavis Cruet, are the only non-flying fairy in the world. Are you trying to tell me, Arthur, that every other single fairy can... can fly? They flitter happily about like thistledown on lovely gossamer wings in the morning sun, said Arthur, all poetic. Gosh, it's just not fair. Flying's dead easy. You should see my dad. All you've got to do is flap those things you've got on your back and up you'll go. Up to now, Mavis had thought they were for keeping off the rain. Oh, Arthur, do you really think I could? Go on, have a little flap. All right, giggled Mavis. Not much cop as a flapper, are you, Maeve? You can do better than that. It's no good, Maeve. You must think big, think jumbo jet. Ready for takeoff? Then chocks away. Now jump and flap. I think I know where we went wrong. One should always take off into the wind. Hmm, we would seem to have a little technical problem, not enough power to lift the fuselage. In other words, too much weight. Are you trying to tell me that I'm... that I'm... fat? Well, perhaps you are a trifle... obese. Oh, I thought for a moment that you were saying I was fat. Well, perhaps just a bit heavy for flight. Now, if you want to fly, girl, you've got to diet, cut out all those fairy cakes. Oh, said Mavis. Well, that poor little soul didn't eat a single fairy cake for a whole week. She became lighter, but was no longer the happy creature we knew and loved. I'm starving. Cheer up, Maeve, said Arthur. For today's take-off day, so flap, flap, flap. Oh, very nice. How about some happy flittering? I'm much too hungry, Arthur. Higher and higher she went, little knowing she was on the brink of disaster.
What's that up there? Snarled Evie, let another wicked witch. Why, it's that fat fairy flittering like thistledown. I'll down her. Then she cast one of her evil spells. Gosh, a fairy cake tree. Oh, how could the poor dear resist such wicked temptation? She didn't. And became heavier and heavier. And then, oh horror, her wings gave way. Whoops. Fancy a fairy cake, said Mavis. Now, once a year, the small folk of Doily Wood prepare to go on holiday. Mavis Cruitt, the fairy, was doing just this. When up came the caterpillar, Arthur. Hello, Mavis, said Arthur. Keep him well. No, I can see you're not. Mavis, did you know you've got spots all over your, uh, tummy? Ha <laughs> ha, giggled Mavis. Silly old Arthur, I'm trying on my new swimsuit. Do you like it? Very nice, I'm sure, said Arthur. I'm going to the seaside. I always go on a climbing holiday. Fancy. I go right to the top of that big beech tree. That is dull, dull, dull. Oh, I don't know. The food's good. Very tender leaves up there. And it's a nice view. Dull. Where are you going then? Asked Arthur. Oh, Italy, Spain, Hawaii, who knows? Goodbye, Arthur. I'll send you a card. Don't do anything I wouldn't do, said Arthur glumly. Tree climbing did perhaps seem a bit, well, dull. Climbing holidays was good enough for me, Dad, and they're good enough for me, said Arthur to himself. And then he met Car Wash tying up a parcel. What you got there then, Car Wash? asked Arthur. The Moog, said Car Wash. Hello, Arthur, said the Moog. He always goes on a package holiday, explained Carwash. I shall post him somewhere exotic. I personally shall stay with a very dear friend in Catford. I'm going to climb a tree. A tree? How oh, very exciting. Soon after that, Arthur had the misfortune to run into evil Edna. Out of my way, caterpillar, cried the witch. I'm off on my holidays. Going somewhere nice? I'm going here, said Edna. That's the hotel. My window is marked with a cross. I'm going to lie on that beach there and cast a nasty, horrid spell. I shall make it rain on every one of you all day long. After that, I shall have a paddle in the sea. Hope your feet go rusty, called Arthur, but very quietly. I could go somewhere exciting too, if I wanted, said Arthur. Well, the next day, Arthur was having a little nap on a toadstool when... It wasn't a toadstool at all. It was a rocket manned by those intrepid explorers of space, the astronauts. Hey, asked Arthur. Where's this thing going? Oh, Mars. You're going to Mars for your holidays. Fancy. Mars. Now, no one could say that was dull. Mind if I join you? Then suddenly... <coughs> the astronauts had to return to Earth for rocket repairs, leaving Arthur rather up in the air. Appreciating the gravity of the situation, he also returned to Earth, landing on his head. Greetings, your gracious and noble majesty, Caterpillar Queen of the planet Mars, said Arthur. Quaw. And the beautiful queen said, Wake up, you! If there's one thing I can't stand, it's a snoring caterpillar. I thought you'd gone to the seaside, Edna. Well, I came back, didn't I? snapped Edna. My feet went rusty. Oh, dear, said Arthur. <laughs>